Hi, I'm Jeff Seba. If you're a real, if anyone in here is a realtor, please stand up. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, P E N N S. Pen is my video strategy, uh, and the core reason why the Seabot team has grown a thousand percent over the past six years. I want to kick us off with a bang, so uh, I created this neighborhood video as an example of what I'm talking about when I say video strategy. Uh, so a part of my business is going to help us out. Let's see what's up. One thing that makes Arcadia great is it's, it's great public schools, starting with Hopi Elementary and Ingleside. Arcadia High School is the cornerstone, but it's also super close to the top rated private schools, such as Phoenix Country Day, Brophy, and Xavier. You cannot help but be drawn to this neighborhood because of the irrigated lots, creating the grass-lined streets, an appeal that is found nowhere else in the valley, reminiscent of a Midwestern town in the middle of the desert. Hi, I'm Gilbert. I'm part of the Seabock team, one of the working agents here in Arcadia, and I call Arcadia home. This is in front of one of my favorite restaurants, Steak 44. Great food and uh, don't be surprised if you run into some uh, professional sports personnel. It's a great area. People love this restaurant. They call it home. Arcadia is a highly sought after area and we'd love to find you the perfect home here. Arcadia is full of great nightlife and entertainment. We're here at one of Arcadia's most popular restaurants. Uh, the food is fabulous. Postino's. Actually, I'm here for happy hour looking for Phil. La Grande Orange is a must visit when visiting Arcadia, or even if you're a local resident looking to walk or bike to a place to eat, whether it's for lunch, breakfast, or dinner. If you're looking for a tip, go with the vegetarian pizza. It's one of my favorites. We're on a quiet street in Arcadia, a typical street, except that this home was the home of the director of Jaws, Indiana Jones, Steven Spielberg. I mean, he directed E.T. You could even see it now as he rolled up on his bicycle with an alien in the basket. But I mean, this is what we see throughout Arcadia is quiet streets, families playing outside, obviously a place that you'd like to call home. When you're looking for your next Arcadia home, or maybe looking to get out of your last Arcadia home and into the new one, visit sibbach.com we're ready to help you with your next move. Thanks, Phil. So put your hand in the air if you do not like how you look on video. Yeah. You're not alone, right? Like, the good news is we're not alone. Even though I don't like how I look on video, um, even though you don't like how you look on video, the truth is that what you see on film is how you look every day. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, this is your sexy face. <laughs> Uh, you need to get out of your own way because video is the key to market domination and it's taking over the world. And you're letting your appearance, something you cannot change, get in the way. It's time to get over yourself.
over your bad self, right? People are glued to their mobile devices, much like, like each of you are right now while I'm speaking, right? But now 52% of homes are found by buyers on the mobile device. I'm about to share with you my video strategy, which is how I'm winning on the mobile device because they, buyers and sellers, can watch it where and when they want on demand. The question I have for each of you is why are you relying on old methods of marketing to reach your prospects and clients? Consumers, meaning buyers and sellers, are having their attention being stolen away from these old forms of marketing. What this means is they're watching less TV. Are you aware that YouTube, I mean, TV had a good run, right? YouTube is on pace to pass TV as the number one content provider in the world. Yeah, hey oh, right? Consumers are now on their phone while they're doing other things. As they read their mail, right? There goes the just sold postcard, <laughs> right? As they wait in line at the store, consumers are giving most of their attention to social media and the apps on their phone as they can control what and when they consume this content. I love video because of two major benefits. The first, obvious, the visual. I know, easy one, right? Video works because most, prefer, most people prefer to watch their content versus read their content. But why video is going to continue to be and continue to work and even more powerful in the future is because of the second benefit, the audio, right? Two benefits, visual, audio. I love my morning walks listening to podcasts, um, listening to the Gary V audio experience, right? I like the Daily Dose. Heck, I've even released my own podcast called Real Estate 2020, a podcast about the daily workings of the CBOC team. You can Google CBOC, you heard how to spell it, S-I-B-B-A-C-H, Real Estate 2020 to listen. But most importantly, video can double as your own podcast. So now that you've been brought up to speed on why video, let's get into the Real Estate 2020 video strategy. The acronym I want you to write down is PENS. Each letter stands for one of the five types, right? Two ends of the video we shoot. And as a bonus at the end, I'm gonna leave you with uh, the five how-to for production of the 200 videos you're gonna shoot over the next year. Are you all with me? Yeah, hey oh, right? So um, the, ac the acronym is PENS, but um, I'm gonna do it backwards because, you know, it, snap just doesn't roll off the tongue like pens does, so. The S stands for storytelling. Uh, why does storytelling work? Because people buy people. Too often we're having a conversation with someone we met over the internet or through email, and we're trying to win with words. This is the old way, you know a telephone conversation. Instead of pictures, the real estate traditionalists call it a people business. But we're not communicating enough to consumers the way that they prefer to be related to, which is on their time when they want, which can best be achieved through video. Are you with me? Uh, nice. All right. <laughs> but why does storytelling work? People by people. The key to storytelling is, this is not your bio. This is not your resume. And for God's sake, put those awful broker and team stats away, right? Earlier this year, I learned that the top 20 grossing films of all time by volume in the US all follow what's called a hero's journey. Avatar, Titanic, Star Wars, Minions. The story framework goes like this. You can Google it, but I think it's not that important, so I'm going to buzz through these. So it's uh, the setup, the door opens, more time progresses, turning point complications, higher stakes, major setback, climax, and then aftermath. And in the first quarter of this year, as a team of 30, 40 agents, 
and we were working with our agents to try and create story time videos for them. It's too freaking hard, right? Six steps, you're kidding? We're realtors. Hey, oh, right? We're not movie producers. This is your story. It can be your life story, but unfortunately, when we ask our class to video of their life story in relation to real estate, the longest video we received from Ashley was 17 minutes. So, wanted me to point out she did have some commercial breaks, but that was way too long. We had to sympathize. So, when we went to Inman in Q3, we heard a gal from Phoenix, her name was Kendra Hall speak, and she just made it a lot shorter. So, we're going to go with that version, and that's for our story time videos normal, explosion, new normal as the format. So let's show them what a story time video should look like. Today I like to consider myself a family man. My wife had been married for over 10 years. We got two boys, a dog, a mortgage. But I got started in real estate before all of this. People always ask me, where are you from? I like to answer, Scottsdale Osborne, because that's the hospital that I was born at. But I grew up with my mom over in Southern California. And my dad lived here and he owned a real estate company, but I never knew what that meant. I had no idea what that business was or what he did. Until one day in 2006, he called and offered me a job at, at his company. My girlfriend at the time and I packed up our stuff. We were living in LA and moved to Phoenix, Arizona. Agents would come up to me and they would say, hey Phil, text messages. Can you show me how to find those? Hey Phil, what's Twitter? Hey Phil, what's this Facebook? And it turned into the best real estate marketing education that I had. Everything was going great. People started calling me the heir apparent of this real estate brokerage. And we had between 750 and 1,000 agents while I was there. In 2011-ish, we sold the company and this idea of taking over the family brokerage, <laughs> gone. And I actually started to work for agents on the side to help them with their marketing. And that's when Jeff and I started working together. He hired me for 20 hours a week. And then three days later, we moved it to 40 hours a week. And then three months later, we became partners. 2012, that we did 25 million. 2016, we did 106 million. And in 2017, we're on pace to do 150 million. So it's been this fun ride, even though the path didn't work out the way that I originally thought. How do you not love that video? That video is a, a minute and 43 seconds. We realized that with story time videos, it's just the catchy points in your story you're trying to capture. And that our audience prefers simple points in our story. Take out the ums, right? Cut them out. Agents get caught up in trying to make this a full scale production. If I was going to critique Phil, I think now that he's finally practiced enough that he could probably, you know, just reshoot it without so many edits. But other than that, I mean, great video, right, Phil? Yeah. Oh, pretty great good. video. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, the goal is that people buy people with storytelling. The goal is to draw your audience in with your strengths and your weaknesses. Story time videos can be your entire life story, like that one, but it can just be as simple as a single buyer story, or maybe when you help the seller through a ter turmoil in a, trans in a transaction. Each can be equally as endearing as the video we watched with Phil. You need to produce a video, a story time video, now. Immediate take home action point as I speak to you. Then send it to all your leads and friends, post on social media. What are you waiting for? Life passes you by. But the time to do video is now. We don't want your future business to keep passing you by because you're using old school marketing. If your business is flat or declining or just getting started or maybe just not growing fast enough. All right, pens is the ticket. The next video is N, it's niche. So these are kind of self-explanatory, you know, your 55 or older communities, maybe your dog parts, right? Like your historical community, urban moth. Let's see what Ty's got to say. How's it going? My name's Ty with the Seabock team at Realty One Group. We're out here today at Kierling Golf Club. Let's go check it out.
Located in North Scottsdale, this award-winning course is home to three nine-hole championship desert courses. This is a resort golf course that makes sure to give their guests the best experience possible. One of the many perks of this club is their shaded range. It allows you to hide from the sun during those hot sunny months. You will be given the luxury experience at this desert oasis with its friendly staff there to help you with anything you might need. From the course to the restaurant to even the staff, everything here is high quality. If you'd like any more information on this course or any other course in the valley, please visit sibbach.com. We'll see you at the next one. Right, pretty simple. Shoot, upload to your website, and then deliver it through Facebook and Instagram, and they're going to watch it. The other end is neighborhood videos. That's the one I started out with, with Arcadia. Um, I think this is the biggest gap between what realtors deliver and what the consumers want. Is the consumer wants someone that's a local area expert, yet we as agents do not just demonstrate enough local expertise that they would like to help convert their leads. So the reality is, is that when you're researching the area, you'll learn more and that will help you convert more leads in that area when the phone rings. Okay, the E is expertise. Uh, Marge Lindsay's in your building, right? Like maybe your broker prefers the word specialist. <laughs> you're competing now against three, five, ten other realtors. I, I'm seeing the competition increase that is the internet, but we need to develop a unique selling proposition. So here's the strategy. Do a lot of something. Develop that talent, be work better than and become better at that certain aspect than everyone else in the room, and then demonstrate it on video. Phil, can we take a look at expertise? I'm Jeff Seabach with the Seabach team at Realty One Group. On today's episode of Tips for Top Dollar, we're talking about kitchens, right? We're talking about painted cabinets. And what is the most preferred color out there today? Yes, you got it, white. Although everybody says they don't like white, they are paying top dollar for it. So that's what we did here. We're competing against the, the houses on the golf course next door, and we got to make our house stand out and draw as much attention as possible. The owner had installed new tile floors, we still needed to update the kitchen. So we recommended to paint the cabinets, put in new stainless steel appliances, and bam, right? Top dollar, here we come. We sold it in less than three weeks, and it even sold for 15,000 more than I thought it was gonna sell for. Is that worth it for you, an extra 40,000 in your pocket? I think so, right? If you got a house that you'd like to get top dollar for, visit sibbach.com. Okay, lastly, it's P, property videos. Like, we've all shot these before. You guys prefer the inside, but it could be inside or outside, Phil. The most common form of video is the P. P-E-N-N-S, your key, right? So in wrapping up, I'd like to give you these five how-tos for producing these videos, right? Write down what you want to cover, meaning the key point to achieve in the video. Two, pick an interesting background. Interesting backgrounds keep people around longer. Three, Cut out the, mm, then if you're me, cut out the rights, right? So, because <laughs> you're going to say shit that doesn't need to be in video, and that has to be cut out. Four, send it to a friend, and don't be like your seller. You know, your seller, everybody loves my house. Yeah, they're called your friends, right? Let's get someone to give us some true feedback, someone that's going to um, give us actual feedback. Five, don't be frustrated. Expect to fail, improve, and shoot it again. 
The good news when you first start creating videos is, don't worry, no one's going to see it. <laughs> Even if you put it on YouTube. <laughs> so, after you put it up, and you watch it and send it to your friends, and you got a total of six views, and it sucks, you can take it down. No one will even know. <laughs> it's hard to think that this is what we're going to have to do in the next three to five years to be successful, but hopefully you've had this, you'll have the same success that I have had. Thank you. One of the things that I love what you said is, um, is that I work with so many new agents, and there are so many social media classes and videos. There's just all these classes and lunch and learns that we all go to, and it's all the same thing. Okay, uh, the future is going in video. People like to watch videos, so create videos. And maybe you can speak to this because what I find the problem is is we just go and create videos, but we don't really step back and ask the question of what is the consumer going to be interested in? And what's going to attract the consumer? And then we get stuck just promoting ourselves. Uh, can you speak to that and what you go through and, 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 and developing storylines that you think that the consumer would really want to know rather than what you think they want to know? Yeah, I mean, the reality is, is that consumers are not looking for a realtor at all. Unfortunately, realtors are everywhere. There's 50,000 of them. So if you're out there telling everybody how great you are and that you're a realtor, you're wasting the time on film. What they're looking for is something that they can't learn on the internet. Something that when you're talking about it's a three bedroom, two bath, guess what? They already know that. Right? We're behind the curve here. As soon as we put something on the internet in today's world, everybody in the world knows it's available. So we have to learn to be, you know, like Wayne Gretzky, right? Like look for the next move. Like what is, what is the information that they can't find? Be that local area expert and they will come. I think this one of the big mistakes that you alluded to, but it's that people produce a video, but then they don't distribute it to uh, enough places to get people to watch. Or the right audience. Or the right audience, true. So my other, my other question, if you just take a couple minutes, um, is we get caught up in agents when, when you know, top producing agents like you come and, and speak to us and, and we don't really get a chance to hear the story of how you got to be where you're at. Can you take us back to when you first got your real estate license and what that was like for you? Sure. Um, I like many of you, right, was involved in a real estate transaction. It didn't go well, and I could do it better than everyone else, all that stuff. Um, and I was a part-time realtor. I bought my first house. And then um, it was something I always wanted to get into, but I started selling real estate on the side while I worked at the company. Shocker, right? Like, it's pretty much the same. Um, that was in 2003, and then I, I saved up enough money. Um, I was... Crazy enough, converting internet leads in 2003, but buying leads um, from internet providers and getting and trying to save enough money to leave, so that uh, I saved six months of salary, you know, up. Um, and in the fall of the year, my, I, things weren't going good at work. My boss, they reduced my salary by 35 percent, and my wife and I just had a kid, and you know, I I, I was devastated that someone could take. My, I, I was on an incentive trip the year before because I was exceeding the sales of the company. But then the next year they came back and said, oh, you've got to reduce your salary. I'm like, I'm still doing my job well. I didn't understand that they could do that. That was the, that was the drive that they got me to want to leave um, working at a corporation. And as I saved up enough money uh, in the fall of that year, of course, I, le I quit my job. I have a buy and sell under contract. And then three days later, after I quit my job, of course, uh, the lady also lost her job, which was my boss at work. And then um, I went five months without getting a check. So that was cool. <laughs> But fortunately, it was now 2004, and uh, things, you know, I just kept on plowing ahead. And, uh, you know, um, 
the inventory was decreasing in 2004, it became easier and the market started picking up and thankfully we hung on and to make hay that year. I mean, I ended up selling seven million that year, things really caught on, but does that answer your No, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's great just to hear, hear the beginning stories because we always see the end results and, and all the awards and all the designations, but for those of us who are striving for that next level, it's just always good to hear the background and the backdrop. Yeah, I mean, we've been through that. Through, uh, at my wife's here, so this is one of my favorite stories. So in 2003, my business was, after six years, it has, was starting to decline. I had a peak year in 2005, but it was starting to, what Tom Ferry now calls, I was a fading winner. And that's, I was a great realtor, I was doing things well, but my business wasn't, you know, it was kind of just flat. Um, and that year, I went into my wife because it was after you know 2008, 2009, right? The tough years. Um, I went into her. It was uh, the fall of 2010, and we had about like thirty thousand dollars in our savings account. And I walked into <laughs> into our bedroom, and I'm like, we should put it all into a website. <laughs> and she's like, that's a great idea. No, that wasn't. I mean, that took me a couple months to convince her, but finally we did that, and that was that was the beginning of the run. So there you go. All right, fantastic, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Bob.